<laughs> Meanwhile, it is Martin Luther King Day. It is a holiday. It's an official day of service and celebration of the civil rights leader's life and legacy. Joe Biden, as we have been talking about, he's going to be sworn in as the nation's 46th president in two days. Today, he was in Philadelphia, where he and future First Lady Jill Biden volunteered at Phil Abundance, the region's largest hunger relief group. Meanwhile, Vice President-elect Kamala Harris, who resigned her Senate seat today, and husband Doug Emhoff volunteered at Martha's Table in Washington, D.C. Donald Trump and Melania, no public schedule on Martin Luther King. They were home packing or watching TV, whatever they were doing. But they did absolutely <laughs> nothing to celebrate his life, his legacy, or what he stood for. Now, across yeah. the nation... It's not surprising, is it, Yo-Yo and Vanessa? I was about to say, there's no surprise. <laughs> no there. surprise there, right? Why even waste no. my breath anymore, right? right? Now, across the nation, marches, parades, and other events to mark the holiday honoring Martin Luther King have been canceled, unfortunately, because of COVID. Many events moved online. But as we talked about at the top of the hour, right here in bold, bold letters, it says, Brad... This is the most important thing to remember on Martin Luther King. We will have our first female black vice president of the United States of America. Yes. That was a dream that Martin Luther King certainly had, that all men and women are yes. created equal. We vote in and we put as our leaders the best, and it has nothing to do with the color of their skin or where they were born. So that was absolutely part of his dream. KQED Perspectives has a series of two-minute personal testimonies about Dr. Martin Luther King's legacy for diversity. One of these were by author Lee Mal Lovett, a Chinese immigrant who arrived after the Immigration and Nationality Act of 1965. As a matter of fact, this is actually interesting and actually also very true. Lovett right. wrote that on Martin Luther King Jr. Day, she celebrates the civil rights movement that helped foster the historic opening of immigration laws. President Johnson spoke of lifting the bars of discrimination against immigrants. It was Vice President Hubert Humphrey urged us to bring our immigration law into line with the spirit of the Civil Rights Act of 1964. The following year, the Heart Seller Act opened the doors to people coming from China, India, Brazil, Pakistan, lifting the ethnic bans and quotas that existed for over 40 years. There was, prior to that, they had quotas based on Western Hemisphere and non-Western Hemisphere. So who's, and that was how quotas were done for immigration. So how did Western Hemisphere work? Who's in the Western Hemisphere? It's Europeans. Yeah. So right. it was actually the civil rights movement that caused the diversification of immigration into the United States of America in 1965. So they're absolutely right. All as a result of the work of MLK and the other civil rights leaders of that generation. It was the Immigration and Nationality Act of 1960. My grandfather, Harry Spar, was, you know, Spar and Bernstein. He got into mm -hmm. immigration law right at that time in 1965, because prior to that, wow. really, I mean, he was an immigration lawyer prior to that, but he was doing immigration. He was just doing a little bit of everything. But it was right. that law that allowed Harry Spar eventually become Spar and Bernstein to practice solely immigration law because you couldn't practice solely immigration law. There wasn't enough clients to do it until then. But really? Yeah. Wow. wow. It's so interesting yeah. to see how things change right. over time. And right. that, there's you, Uncle Brad. And here, here we, we are. are. And here we Those are. are good, right. Yeah. I mean, because, because if it wasn't for that law, and Martin Luther King and all the civil rights, we wouldn't ha even have a Brad show live right now. Wow. Right? Think about yeah, it. Because deep. then Harry yeah. Spar would not have gone into immigration law. Then he, I would not have been inspired to go into immigration law. And then we wouldn't be here today. Right. I wouldn't have even known you. Meanwhile, <laughs> there's going to be a pardon palooza tomorrow. The news oh, says gosh. that Trump is going to be pardoning about 100 people. If that's the case, it will not be a record. The record was by Slick Bill Clinton who pardoned 176 people on his last day. No, actually, Obama pardoned more. He pardoned over 300 in his last week or two. But most of the people that Obama pardoned were low-level drug offenders who were, had huge, huge jail sentences for decades. And he pardoned mm. them. And he used his pardon power for acts of mercy and clemency. 
which is really the purpose of pardoning, to say, I'm going to right something that was wrong. Right. Trump is not righting any wrong. What Trump is doing is he is going to use the pardon power. You'll see it tomorrow. I'm sure we'll talk about it. We'll see who he pardons. But he's going to use the pardon power to pardon people who either will benefit him in the future or who owe him a debt because they protected him, such as this guy, Steve Bannon, or who paid somebody lots and lots of money who is very, very close to Trump to pardon. So Trump will use his pardon power. I mean, he'll surprise me and do otherwise, but I don't expect anything other than I will pardon this person because it will benefit me in the future, me being Donald Trump. I will pardon this person because they are my family member. I will pardon this person because they protected me in all of the various investigations against me when they got themselves in trouble or I'll pardon this person because they paid somebody or even me lots and lots of money to do it. Yeah. But there will be nothing real crooked. But but there will be nothing there about clemency and righting a wrong or anything like that. I doubt it. Of course not. Because remember I forget the guy's name, but Kim Kardashian, like last month, literally was crying, like screaming through her fingers, she said she's dedicating the whole week to her tweeting and posting about a black man who was sentenced to death. And it was for something that he did not commit. He did not commit the crime and he didn't, you know, pardon him. So Mm -hmm. why would he right the wrong when he could right the people who did wrong for him? You know, it's sick. It's wild to me that people could get away with this and it's just blatant, like he he's doing it for his his own benefit. He needs to get his last favors in. He has few hours. Well, so far, Trump has granted, just to, you know, give a brief history of pardons of Donald Trump, 94 people. 49 he issued Mm -hmm. the week of Christmas, including his former campaign chairman, Paul Manafort, who was in jail for fraud and who refused to testify against Trump in the Russia investigation. Longtime confidant (laughs) Roger Stone, who also lied to investigators. He, He was going to jail for lying to investigators about the Russian investigation in order to protect Trump. He got pardoned as well. Michael Flynn, Trump's first national security advisor, who pleaded guilty to lying to the FBI during the investigation of the Russian interference. Trump pardoned him. Charles Kushner, the father of Jared Kushner, Trump's son-in-law, got pardoned, as well as three Republican former members of Congress. Four black water contractors who killed dozens of unarmed Iraqis during the in cold blood murderers Mm. pardoned. He also issued full pardons to three former Border Patrol agents who were charged and found guilty of crimes on the southern border while violating a man's civil rights. Like, I don't want to see any of those people free. No. (laughs) Well, here's some good news. Okay, on day one, on Wednesday... In 48 hours, Joe Biden Mm -hmm. said he is going to be rejoining the Paris Climate Accords to reduce carbon emissions around the world. On day one in 48 hours, Joe Biden is going to end the travel ban on Muslim countries. He is also going to halt all evictions nationwide until further notice. He is also going to put a hold on all student loan repayments during the coronavirus crisis, all on day one. On day one, Joe Biden is going to mandate that if you are on federal property, you must be wearing a mask. On day one, Joe Biden is going to send a massive, large-scale immigration plan to Congress. The plan is expected. It has not been announced yet. It is all speculation. The speculation at this moment is that the plan will include an amnesty for the dreamers, an amnesty for everybody who has TPS, no matter what country you are from, and a pathway Mm. to become legal and ultimately to become a United States citizen for everybody who is in the United States by a certain date who is undocumented. Now, that is a massive, massive amnesty program. That doesn't necessarily mean that one, 
it will pass Congress. And two, right. if it does pass Congress, it will pass Congress in the form that Joe Biden put it to Congress. Even when it Obama immediate, passed correct? Obamacare, Obamacare that was ultimately passed didn't look anything like what Obama presented to Congress to pass. Uh. The art of politics is the art of compromise. And there will mm. have to be a lot of compromise before we see ultimately this immigration plan come to fruition. They say, you know, why there has not been anything positive for immigration since 1986. They say immigration is the third rail of politics, the third rail meaning the electricity that goes through the subway stations to power the trains. And if you touch the third rail, you die. So congressmen and right. senators are very, very fearful of passing anything for immigration positively because that is basically a death, or at least in their minds, a death knell for their political prospects for the future. That's why they always call immigration the third rail of politics. So before we get overly excited, I would call myself cautiously optimistic rather than overly excited. Cautiously mm -hmm. optimistic means that we are going to get a plan and a law that is passed that will help many people to what extent we don't know, to what hoops we have to jump through, we don't know. My belief, it will not be a simple amnesty the way you fill out a form and you get a green card. I doubt it, but mm -hmm. I would love to be surprised otherwise. What I would I suggest- I mean, at least we know that. Right, what I Point would suggest it. to people, everybody, is that generally the way that it is done is that, and the way that it's always been proposed in the past, is that people who are in the system, you know, because congressmen always say, we don't want people jumping the line. That's not fair. People have been waiting for their turn for years and years and years. So my guess will be, and I don't know, because it's just a guess. And by the way, just because Biden doesn't even put in his plan doesn't mean that ultimately that's not how it turns out. But my belief right. will be that people who are in the system who have something pending will be able to get something quicker than people who did nothing. It's my guess. Okay, I don't know for sure. So to protect everybody, it doesn't hurt to file something. Nobody's coming for you. Joe Biden is putting in the first 100 days, he is putting a stop to all deportation. So nobody's coming for you in the first 100 days anyway. That's what he says he's going to do. So to me, it makes sense. File something, get in the system. It can yeah. hurt you, and it could very well help you. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, in a- That's crazy. Biden's doing more in the first hour of his presidency than Trump did in four years. You're damn right. <laughs> You're damn right he is. <laughs> That's crazy. Or at you least he's trying it. to. You are damn right at he is. At least he's trying to. There's right. still, he, you know, it's like Brad said, there's still so many levels to it. He can go in with what he wants or what he would like to see. There's still so many hands that it has to right. go through and time will pass, months will go by and we're, you know, hopeful. But I was gonna say, regardless of the fact, I th at least feel even though that's gonna happen, like it does have to go through so many hands, I just feel a lot better in my heart and my soul that the free leader of the world, our president, the person who's supposed to be having our backs actually wants this, you know? So I'm good with that. You know, you know I'm good with him at least putting the effort in. And I would say this, what makes me feel good as an immigration advocate is that this is the first president who said that immigration is important to him and is mm. making it important. Meaning yeah. that every president, you know, you only have so much political capital that you can push just so many different laws to change in that first 100 days. Every new president who comes in has that 100 days and has that political capital. And you could look at political capital like bullets in a gun. Okay, you only have a certain amount of bullets in a gun. You can't shoot everything and shoot everybody. <clears throat> so you gotta choose right. what bullet you're going Which to one? use. And mm -hmm. in my lifetime, I've never seen a president come in and say, one of my bullets that mm. I'm gonna use in my first 100 days is for immigration. The first walk. time I've wow. ever, even Obama. Obama's bullets were changing healthcare. 
he made Obama. Right, right. But he was you, talking immigration, but by the time he got to immigration, his political capital wasn't there anymore. Right, but do you think it's also because of what immigration had to endure like within the past four years, and that's why it's such a hot topic now that which would have Biden, you know, Yes, I, 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 believe, I believe if we didn't have Donald Trump, so you want to look at a blessing in disguise if you want to. I don't know if it is right. or not. But I believe if you didn't have <laughs> Donald Trump, who was so vicious to immigrants, you would right. not have gotten such a backlash and sympathy by a majority of Americans to give Joe Biden cover to change the immigration laws. Right. right. My opinion. And meanwhile, in a last-ditch effort to be as cruel as he possibly can to immigrants, the Trump administration is deporting more African asylum seekers in the last few days than they have in a very long time. Now, the U.S. Customs and Enforcement has confirmed that there's an actual removal flight, and that's hundreds and hundreds of African asylum seekers who left Louisiana on Thursday bound for Nairobi. And there could be one final oh, deportation God. flight that leaves Tuesday night, which is 12 hours before Trump gives up his office. That's another three, 400 people that he's going to deport before he leaves. He needs to be as cruel as he possibly can, right, right. even at the last minute. I sent you over <laughs> the weekend. We're not going to play it, but I sent you over the weekend a clip from our show about a year and a half ago. And I said, you know what my American dream is? My American dream is that someone take Twitter away from Donald Trump. And I said, what a beautiful yeah, world up. we would have if that would happen. And I, you know, and I was making a joke, and I didn't think he, Twitter would ever, at that point, ever take it away. <laughs> and I just came across it right. over the weekend. I sent it to you, and I go, look, dreams do come true. And I, and I sent it to both of yeah. you. That was so right. good. And yeah. it, it looked like it was dated 2019. That's 2019, right. Yeah. It looked and now, let me just tell you what's happened in social media and in the universe of social media and social media discourse since Trump has taken away his Twitter handle, or Twitter has taken away Trump's Twitter handle. Mm -hmm. Online misinformation about election fraud has plunged 73%. Wow. It has dropped more than 2.5 million mentions of election fraud in the week after Trump got, was banned from Twitter than before. This is across the entire internet, not just uh, Twitter. Trump and his supporters have lost accounts on Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, Twitch, Spotify, Shopify. Trump's suspension is indefinite. Twitter banned more than 70,000 accounts affiliated with QAnon, which played a key role in fermenting the Capitol siege. Can you imagine down 73% fake news wow. about election fraud that didn't happen, about Trump really being the winner. That's crazy. That just goes to show how much power that man really had. Wow. It also goes to show how much power our social media companies have and how they could, if they wanted to police better the discourse and make the discourse better for all of mankind. That's not this to say true. that's not to say that we should ban what is legitimate discourse, but there should be certainly policing of statements and activities that cause what we saw last week when those statements mm -hmm. and that are just absolutely not true. Now, a study released the week before the presidential election by the Election Integrity Partnership found that just 20 conservative pro-Trump Twitter accounts, including at real Donald Trump, were the source of over one-fifth of all the retweets pushing misleading narratives about voting. So 20 accounts run by really, really smart social media hackers, I guess. I don't know what you would call them. Social media ninjas, people who really know. <laughs> I don't know what you would call these 20 accounts. I like social media. I like the ninjas. Yeah, I mean the they're, ninjas. So, the yeah, ninjas. Like you, don't, social, you don't see them coming. You, you, don't, you don't see them coming. coming. You don't know where they're coming from. One fifth of all came from twenty accounts, and caused all of this. It's amazing. Wow. When you think about it, wow. amazing. When you think about it, we have ninety-five million coronavirus cases worldwide, and they are saying now number of American killed by coronavirus is 397,000. The number Ugh. of all Americans killed in World War II 
the greatest war of all time, 405,000. Sometime by the time Joe Biden gets sworn in in the next 48 hours, we will have surpassed the number of deaths by COVID than all of the deaths in World War II. And to me, it is right on our leaders. It starts with Donald Trump. I hold him responsible. There were little things, things that just common sense things that could have been done to prevent all of this. I can go through it and I'm not an expert in healthcare. Could have mandated people to wear masks. Okay. Instead, Donald Trump said, you don't have to wear a mask. And all the people around him said, you don't have to wear a mask. You want to know why? Because he felt we're going to get a vaccine. And once we get a vaccine, everybody will get vaccinated. So we might as well keep the economy open for a couple of months. The vaccine's coming in December and we'll all be good. And because numbers, we don't want to, numbers but, will rise, but, but it's but, okay. But, but the problem with that, with that, yeah, look at that face. The problem, because right. that was his theory. His theory is we're getting a vaccine in a, in a couple months. Why do we have to close down our economy? Let's keep the economy going. We'll have a vaccine in December and this will all be over with. Because that's what he kept saying, right? Yeah. Except having a vaccine doesn't save anybody vaccinating people, right. vaccinating people, getting the vaccine, getting the, the vaccine doesn't help a soul. You manufactured vaccine. Great. Didn't you haven't solved our problem? The problem right. gets solved when you take a needle and you put it in somebody's arm. That's right. when the problems get solved. And we are now Five weeks or so into a vaccine, nobody is getting vaccinated. Why? It's because they have made it too complicated to get vaccinated. They've made arcane rules to get vaccinated where only certain people can. They have not manufactured enough vaccine. And, and then when they have manufactured enough vaccine, they don't know how to get it to the right people. They don't have enough places to vaccinate people. They don't have enough doctors and nurses and other professionals who know how to vaccinate somebody. The whole thing was screwed up. Donald Trump and the whole federal government said, it's good enough that we make the vaccine. We're going to give it to the states. And they give the vaccine to the states, but they gave no money to the states. They gave no instructions to the states. They gave right. nothing to the states. Plus, they didn't even make enough vaccines. Plus, they promised more vaccines than they actually had. It is a very right. simple thing. They had nine months to get this right. Get the there's a, a, a manufacture, okay? And if you and mandate, mandate, tell companies under law you got to manufacture this. Don't leave it up to the don't leave it up to the private sector to figure out how much to manufacture, okay? There's the, the Defense Appropriations Act or whatever it's called that mandates the government says goes to a company and says you must manufacture this. Period. Uh, number two. They could have set up tent hospitals all across the country waiting, waiting for these vaccines to come in. They could have trained people on how to inject. They, they could have done so, so many things. So they would we have been could, ready to execute. We, it, it, was, it was a total lack of execution, no plan whatsoever. You know, Operation Warp Speed was these companies made the vaccine. And you know what? They made a vaccine that for all intents and purposes, if they can get it into everybody, would wipe away COVID because it's 94, 95% uh, prevents COVID and the 5% who get it don't get it bad enough to be hospitalized. So if you get it into everybody's arm, COVID's over. We're back to normal. The economy's back to normal. And our whole nightmare is gone. But they didn't do anything. I also read something back in December where it said like the U.S. declined to buy more Pfizer COVID vaccine doses. So and that was even after now I'm reading even after the interim data board member said to do so. So my thing is, is like, did you, did y'all even really want to save your people or what? Like, I honestly think it was I, just for the economy. Like <laughs> it was just a whole I mean, just manufacture and get it in people's arms. That should have been. Plan 1A, 1B, 1C, 1D. It's get a vaccination in an arm, and this is over. 
Until then, this goes on and on and on forever. I never thought about that. You are so right about it, though, because all he kept on saying was, we're going to get the vaccine, we're going to get the vaccine. But, like, I've not heard anything about how we're going to, you know, right. give, give it to the people until the administration started coming in and saying, this is what we're planning on doing. We're going to get this many people, this many million people in the first month. This I didn't hear nothing about that with Trump. And by the way, he left it up to the states, but didn't give any money to the states to do it. And who That's, says on, and who man. says the people in the states know how to even do this? Know how to do it. Like, they don't. This is something we ain't never went through. Like, are we investing in that? No. <sighs> uh, all right, let me tell you about a cat named Patches. <laughs> this will cheer you up. <laughs> yeah, Patches. This is news. Patches. Let me introduce you to Patches. Patches was good. believed to have been killed in a California mudslide three years ago. Miraculously, Patches is still alive. Oh. Yeah, Patches belonged what? to Jose Gower, one of 23 people killed in a mudslide that hit Santa Barbara. Uh, I'm sorry, Josie Gower in January 2018. Now, Gower's daughter, Brianna, said we had kind of lost hope about Patches. Her mom had several cats that slept in her garage, which was destroyed during the disaster. But in December, Patches was found alive and roaming around the same area. She disappeared, said Josie's daughter. It's a nice thing to hear that after many years, you can get a little bit of joy out of something that was quite horrific. Just weeks ago, Patches was taken in by the Animal Shelter Assistance Program, a local shelter in Santa Barbara. Staff say they were able to identify her because of the microchip registered under Gower's name. It's a great mystery where she's been for the last three years. To Brianna, the cat's reemergence is like getting a piece of her mama's home back, and she calls it a nice end to 2020. Yep, cats definitely have nine lives, and the microchip That's works. Insane. The microchip works. I had a dog with a microchip that got lost, and they found the dog and microchipped her and brought her back to me. Really? Oh, wow. Yeah, so the microchips definitely work. Oh. But wait, did you say three years? The three cat was years. missing for three years? Yeah. Either that or That's a cat wild. really has nine mm -hmm. lives. Right. Mm. And you said the mudslide mm. killed 23 people? Yes, including the cat's owner. Oh. <sighs> But the woman. cat survived. Wow. The cat survived, or so we think. Or maybe the cat has nine <laughs> lives. I was like, it looked, it, what was the pet I think, I, think, I think the cat has nine <laughs> lives, but we should ask Carol. Carol would know. <laughs> Carol would definitely know. She's... Carol, you tell Carol us. Is that cat, did that cat, does that cat have nine <laughs> lives, or is that cat just roaming around for the last three years? Just because she's the cat tigress. Yeah, right? she would know if anybody. <laughs> Meanwhile, a pigeon that Australia declared a biosecurity risk has oh. received a reprieve from a United States bird organization declaring its identity leg band was fake. The band suggests the band suggested the bird found in Melbourne backyard on December twenty sixth was a racing pigeon that had left Oregon eight thousand miles away. On that basis, Australian authorities on Thursday said they considered a bird a disease risk and planned to kill it. Okay, now oh I God. understand the story. They found a bird that's not supposed to be in Australia that's only found in Oregon. Right. And they said, wow, this bird made uh -huh. it to Australia. We better kill it because maybe it has some disease. You know, this U.S. bird may right. have some disease. But Dion Roberts, sport development manager for the Oklahoma-based American Race and Pigeon Union, said on Friday it was a fake. The band number belongs to a blue bar pigeon in the United States, which is not a bird pictured in Australia. So Australia's agricultural department, which was responsible for biosecurity, agreed the pigeon dub Joe after President Joe Biden was wearing a fraudulent copy leg band. What is a leg band? Ah. I don't know what a leg band is. That's why I'm That's confused little, on this. He has a little blue. Why? He has a little, a little blue leg band on his leg. Can you see it? Yeah. Why? In the picture? Who puts the leg band on? They are carrier like pigeons. Trackers. They are carrier pigeons. Jill says they put on ID bands on pigeons to identify them as carrier pigeons. Two adorable shelter Who's dogs named carrier? Niles and Frazier. They're looking for their forever homes. The pups formed a strong bond uh -huh. during their time at the City Dogs Cleveland Animal Shelter. So the facility... Oh, those are cute dogs. So the facility is working they to are. get the... Let's go back to the picture of the dogs. The they're trying to find homes for these dogs. Oh. Yeah, the, to attract what potential adopters for the pair and to give Niles and Frazier a treat, the shelter took the two pups on a sleepover in a nearby hotel, dressing them up in matching pajamas. 
Now, while at the hotel, oh. the two dogs cuddle together while still making time for some silly antics and exploring. City Dogs assures anyone interested in the pups that they enjoy meeting new people and are quick to make friends. The dogs also described as generally polite and easy. They are five years old. They weigh 50 pounds, and anyone can call out to City Dogs in Cleveland, Ohio to get these dogs. They're very cute, by the They're way. They're cute. And by the way, I read that, you know, dogs are going very fast, you know, especially with COVID. People want dogs. Yeah, it makes sense. I mean, more people are staying home. Dogs are the man's best friend. I actually want a dog, but I had a dog before, and it's a lot to take care of. So, but I could understand. Did you have a I big dog or a small dog? No, it was a medium size, like 12 pounds. He's right. a Cocker Spaniel mixed with a poodle. He looked like me, Think brown and curly you. hair. <laughs> did, you call, did you call your dog Yo-Yo? <laughs> That'd be great if you called your dog Yo-Yo. <laughs> no, I called him Polo because he okay. looked like the polo bear. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Do you have a dog, Vanessa? <laughs> he looked like me. <laughs> no. I mean, we had like a pug in the Dominican Republic, but not here in the States. When, I got pets back in the island, when, not when, here. When my, when my kids were babies, I brought home this huge, huge standard poodle. And it was big. It was like a horse. It was like 60, oh, 65 pounds. Like huge, 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 huge. And this yeah. dog, and you know, and I remember when my daughter Gabby, she was like a you know little three-year-old. She's like running around like this. And this dog would come and just uh -huh. literally bowl her over in the kitchen. She'd go flying and crying. I'm like, this dog's killing my kids. <laughs> so oh, no. uh, and as much as I love that dog, because it was so you cute, had I had to get rid of it. What yeah. color was it? It was it was like a reddish brownish color. It wasn't even like it was like a, Ooh, it was it was a, a very, ginger. Yeah, like a ginger color. And uh, and this do and dog was very gorgeous. cute. You know, the dog was just lick you know lick you to death. But you know, the dog had they, yeah, they're sweet. Yeah, but the dog had no manners. It didn't know how to be polite to little kids, <laughs> and it would just like go running over and just go totally you know like like my kids were like you know you know one of the bowling pins you know in a bowling alley. I'm like up. Oh, the strike again. <laughs> <laughs> Honey, they got oh, the kids. Oh, they got the kids again. It builds personality. Yeah. That's so, all good. Uh, <laughs> so then we got small dogs, which where I ended up with Lucky and T-Bone, because we got small ones after that. Oh. Animal rescuers in Scotland are scheduling for the owners of an escaped hamster that braved sub-freezing temperatures to make its way to a candy store. The Scottish SPCA said the hamster was caught on uh, closed caption television footage clinging to a person who entered the Poundland candy shop in Glasgow on New Year's Eve. The hamster jumped over the unaware shopper inside the store and was soon captured and turned over. But not before the hamster got some candy. Uh, the <laughs> SPCA said we've named the little adrenaline candy Junkie Tom Cruise for now, given his Mission Impossible-esque attempt to get some treats for New Year's. Do you like hamsters? I'm not into hamsters. You into hamsters? No. No. No, no. no rodents. Anything that resembles, a, exactly. Anything yeah. that resembles yeah. mice, I just can't get into. Mm. Yeah, no mice, no. no hamsters. They smell. They don't do anything for me. No, someone was telling me yesterday, what are these uh, uh, sparklers, like those flying squirrel things? I, I met oh, a girl no, that no. had them I don't, as like I don't know, pets. I don't know anything about a flying squirrel, but I wouldn't yeah, want them as my pet. Maybe we'll maybe we'll have her on as a guest for for uh, Fuzzy Monday next week, and she can bring her flying pet to the show. To the studio. <laughs> we can start bringing live Let animals. Bring we can start bringing live yeah. animals to Fuzzy Monday. What do you think, Yo Yo? Yeah, cut They're, me out of that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I Unless was it's like, like dog. Mm -hmm. like that. If it's a dog or something like that, you, you, you can't. Yo, yo, take the poodle. Little... Thanks for watching. For more Bradshaw Live, like and subscribe to our YouTube channel.